This is the sort of second try at this, and uh, what it does is I see it essentially as it takes about $1.2 trillion that is currently being paid under the Affordable Care Act and sends it back to the states. And so the question is, uh, by getting this back to the states where governors and legislatures would be able to design a program that better meets the needs of the folks of that state, uh, you know, will, will that work better? I think, I think it's a good, good concept. I think it's compelling. It's consistent, certainly, with what the Republicans have been talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, how does the formula work and, and you know, how do various states fare in that? So uh, I'm certainly looking at it. Uh, I think probably um, there also has to be something in the shorter term because this would only kick in in 2019. Meanwhile, you've got 2018 and 2019 to deal with uh, in terms of the cost increases, which are skyrocketing in Ohio. And that's why the president's announcement with regard to the cost saving reductions today is important because that'll help stabilize the market. Okay, what you said is, is pretty interesting. I'll break it down into a couple of different things. For, first of all, you like the idea of the states being able to have a little more control, maybe use things a little differently, make sure that they are adjusting to their states. But it, it will mean, at least as we understand it, that those states are going to have limits uh, on the money that they'll be getting from the federal government. It, it then becomes their problem to try and figure out. And it, let's be very clear about it. These are capped limits um, that are well below what had been understood under Obamacare would be spent from a federal perspective. It, what, what do you think about that? How do, you, how do you deal with that? And will innovation be enough to get you through that? Well, I think efficiency and innovation help a lot. And I think the ability for states to deal with coverage and costs uh, by giving them much more flexibility and responsibility is a good idea. Uh, in some of the aspects of the plan, and again, this is just finalized uh, mid midweek last week, so we're still looking at all the details, but part of it actually does not cap it in the sense that there's a per capita cap, meaning it increases by population, so that there would be an increase in funding. Uh, that's as to traditional Medicaid. Uh, with regard to other parts of the Affordable Care Act, the exchanges, uh, my understanding is there would be a block grant, and that block grant would have with it the flexibility for a state to be able as some states have done, to go to health savings accounts. For other states, they may want to focus on issues like the opioid crisis and the need for more treatment, which certainly would be the case in my state. So it does give governors and legislatures the ability, the flexibility, to be able to respond to the, really, to the needs in that state. So uh, oh, sorry, these, 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 these numbers will be thrown around, Becky, and mm -hmm. uh, frankly, I think some of the numbers I've seen are just not accurate uh, mm -hmm. on one side or the other. So we're trying to get to the bottom of it and figure out how it will actually impact my state of Ohio. And part of the problem is you won't have a complete CBO score until just heading into this. The, the deadline that's been put up of September 30th doesn't allow time for that. You feel confident that you'll be able to figure it out without that? Well, I think so. I mean, we're going to have a CBO score. It'll be as to whether it fits into the what's called reconciliation instructions, meaning, you know, how much money does it spend? Uh, what are the deficit numbers here? My understanding is that, again, it's basically taking the funding that's currently uh, being proposed uh, and block granting it back to the state. So the, the, the cost side of this is not as complicated as the previous bills that tried to kind of recreate the Affordable Care Act and the exchanges in different ways. In other words, in this case, it goes back to the states and to the governors for them to work on it. A lot of Republican governors have supported this, as you can imagine, because this is what they've been asking for, you know, sure. more flexibility. Give me the money. I can handle my own population better. I can provide better coverage. Uh, I can focus on the cost of health care, I can focus on wellness or prevention or, again, getting people into HSAs, health savings accounts and other things. So I think this is going to be, it's going to be a, a mixed reaction, but, uh, you know, it has the opportunity to give states the kind of flexibility they've been asking for. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.